talk later. Good morning, good morning. Y'all come in and have a seat. So glad to see everybody. See members, visitors, everyone. I'm going to ask that you stand and we're going to open the prayer. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Every time I get up here, I say thank you, Lord. I don't think we can say thank you enough, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that we come today, no matter what our situation is, we come expecting to hear the word of God. We come expecting to see things happen in our lives, Lord. We come to see a mighty God move in a mighty way. And we thank you for this service and the worship, Lord, and the message. I just pray we just open up our hearts. We say these things every morning, Lord. We don't want to be repetitious about it, Lord. We want to be deliberate about it, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen
want you to enjoy the church. We want you to enjoy the presence of God. And we pray that you would, you would be ministered to you and feel welcome this morning. But let's pray for this morning's offer. God, we thank you, God, that you bless us, Lord. And that we are about to be indebted to no one, God. And I thank you, Lord, that the, the, the options this has to bring the church, God. I thank you that people have willingly gave God and they believe in your kingdom. And we've seen souls saved because of it, God. We've seen lives changed because of it, God. And I pray that we would continue never to gather money for our benefit, God, for our glory, but for your kingdom, God, to continue to thrive, God, and for your church to continue to thrive, God, and to reach into lives, God. And I pray we would never turn our back on being that arm, God, that reaches out for and brings people in, Lord. We want to be a friend. We want to be a family. We want to show people to Jesus, Lord. So whatever we've got to do, Lord, to get in line with what you want to do, help us to get in line with you, God. And I thank you for this day, and I pray you bless this offering. And use it to build your kingdom. In your name I pray. Amen.
always good. We always see between at least 70 to 80 kids come, and we've seen as many as 35 to salvation salvations in kids' lives, and hopefully it's changing them and working in their life. And I know I'm excited about that every year. It's one of the biggest things we do here, and we do it well, and I'm thankful for it. Uh, so today we're talking about omnipresence. Omnipresence. And there's a few words that when we look at this, we, we need to kind of talk about. So omni means all. So like if it's like if it's this one, let's see, omnipotent. He's all powerful. Describes God. Describes who he is. All right. And omniscient. He's all knowing. And then of course omnipresent. He's all present. The word omni it simply means all. So he's all present. The word omnipresence is a compound word, and it comes from the word omni, which we said all, and presence meaning present. He's he's there. And so God is present everywhere, at all times, with no exceptions. There is no place that you can be that God is not also there. He is always everywhere, in all places, and at all times. I had a friend explain this to me. He explained, uh, just recently too, and I'd never thought about it this way, and he said he just kind of felt like this is what the Lord had showed him about it. He said, imagine it like this. Imagine that that." All time, so the timeline, is not straight, but it's actually a circle. And he said, in the middle of that circle is God. And so he can touch any point at any time. And so he's present in the middle of all the time. So at the beginning of your life, he's present. But he's also present at the end of your life. It's because he's present all times, all knowing, all God. And when I look at it like that, it makes sense to me how he can know my past, he can know my future, he can know all these events that are coming up, and he can be involved the entire time. He's not many gods in many places, he's one God in many places. There's nobody else like that. So, so God is present in this moment, the whole time being present. Uh, so God is present in this moment, and the whole time being present in this moment, he exists outside of the timeline. So if we look at, at time like this, and there's a timeline, then he, if he's present and it's around him, he can intersect that timeline at any point because he's God, so he knows <coughs> what's going on. Now, does, does that mean that he dictates every event of your life? No, he does not, but he knows what's going on at all points in your life. Understanding that God is omnipresent at times, it should bring us great comfort, right? Because he's there all the time. But you know what that should also do? That should also bring us a little bit of fear. Because think of all those times that we act selfishly and we think that nobody sees. Think of those times that you say, oh, I just can do a little over here. He's not going to notice. No, he's there too. He's just, just imagine that. Imagine yourself submerged in water. And that's similar to what the presence of God is like. He's, he's all around you. He's, he's, he's everywhere that you are, but it's not just, he's just not just all around you in that one moment, but he's all around you in every moment. Um, he has been present at your best moments. And also at your worst. Imagine that. So at those great, I mean, right now, just in your mind, think of your best moment in life. Great, what was the day she married me? <laughs> I know she don't have to be here to tell you. <laughs> she married me, it was a great moment. Um, but then, she may say it was also her worst moment. I don't, I don't know. But now, now think of some of the worst moments in your life, the things that you were dealing with, and the difficulties. And maybe you even thought at that time that you were all alone. But the reality is that you weren't on land either. God was there. Oh, you know, from the earliest times, people recognized that God saw them wherever they went. Look at this verse here. Hagar said this. She, she gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. So he's seeing you all the time wherever you are. Now, when you hide your actions from the world because you're, you know, you're ashamed of your behavior, you don't get the hide from God. Right? We think that. We like to think that. I don't know about this thing. God's not there. Uh, you know, I have to think that we think that we're hiding it from him because we continue to do it. If we really thought he saw, I don't know that we would just be like, oh, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and do that anyway. Or, or if we thought that he, he was really uh, observant of what was going on, we wouldn't think that. Do uh, you know there's only one person in all of existence that has been alone from God? you know who it was? on the cross. And he's the only one who's ever had a moment where God was not there. And what did he say? He turned around and he said, he 
He's my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So you've never been alone. Even though you say, man, I've had some times in my life that have been bad, Pastor. I've had some times that I prayed and I didn't hear anything. Just because you didn't hear it doesn't mean it's not there. Okay? I mean, I can be in the room with you in a dark room and you not know I'm there. Doesn't mean I'm not present. Doesn't mean I can't snatch you from the verge of death if I need you. You see, see, he's, Jesus is the only one. And he stood there and he was absent. But nobody else has ever been absent. See, being present is powerful. Being present is powerful. So, so we serve an all-powerful God because he's an all-present God. Think about that. Uh, if, if, you, if you lose someone that you love, the best gift that I can give you is I can show up and be there. You know, Job's friends, as much as we give them a hard time, as much as we're difficult on them, because they, they did come and sit with Job for seven days and didn't say a word. They were present in his pain. And it was powerful presence. It wasn't until they started speaking that they actually messed up. Note to self, right? You don't have to figure out everybody's problems. You don't have to. Just because somebody's going through something doesn't mean that it means that they sinned and they've done awful things and this is just your disappointment. No, sometimes bad things just happen. But you can be present, and presence is powerful. One of the greatest gifts that you can give someone is to be present in their time of need. Now, last Sunday, you know, me and Mother's Day, and, and sometimes I just go harder than I need to, and I, and I, and I, and I go too much, and I'm too busy, and, and I get just, it really it doesn't do good for me at 36. I don't know why. But last Sunday, my head was just spinning. Sunday afternoon, uh, we were headed, I guess it was about 5 o'clock, we were headed to meet April's mom. Uh, we were going to have dinner at Cracker Row. My head was and I said, I just really just feel so out of control and, and, and just overwhelmed and, and tired. And when I'm like that, I'm just real quiet. I just, like, I'm just going to absorb my own kind of pain, kind of thing. And I was just overwhelmed. And, it, it, and I was driving, I actually was driving back from having dinner with you. And I heard what I felt like was, you know, the, everybody has what they feel like is the Lord, okay? Like when you have things that happen and you know you didn't come up with it. So the only, only thing I can explain it is this God. As long as it aligns with the Word of God, then I. I believe it's him. I, I, I really felt like I heard the Lord say in my spirit, he said, I'm present in your environment. You may be overwhelmed. You may be tired. You may think that you don't have anything left. And then that whisper, I'm present in your environment. Well, somebody's present in your environment. You know what they do? They can snatch me from anything that comes in my way. Hosanna, she's a buck wild. She runs around five years old, uh, 65 years old. She's busy everywhere. But you know what? If I'm present in her environment, there's not a whole lot that can get in her way. I will catch her before she messes up. I will grab her before she falls. I may give her a little freedom to run, but you know what? I'm there in case something messes up. I don't let her touch fire. I don't let her touch snakes. I don't let nobody touch her. Why? Because I'm present. And I live under the, uh, the covering of a God who's present in all my circumstances, not only in my past, but in my present and in my future. That's the kind of God I serve. So I'm never alone. So to, to believe that I'm alone would be to believe a lie. And where would a lie come from? Other than the Father of life. Who wants me to think that I'm alone? I'm not important. I have no purpose. When I hear that, I automatically, if I know the voice of the, God, of the King of Jesus, if I know the voice of God, let me tell you, I know the voice of the devil too. When he starts speaking things all my life that I'm not going to announce nothing, that I don't have a hope, that I don't have a future, when he starts saying I'm not good enough, I know that's not the voice of my God because my father don't talk to me that way. I shake it off. Like the Taylor Swift song says. <laughs> I just move on. But I heard the whisper of God say, I'm in your environment. You know what? You can't get too far away. And you may wonder away from the will of God. You may go all the way out of what God wants you to do. You may, you may wonder away from the will of God, but you're not going to wonder away from the presence of God. And when you decide you want to go back to the will of God, you're going to turn around and you're going to step right back in. Because he's going to be right there. Why? Because he does not believe you. Let's look at this. Psalm 139, 7. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, guess what? Even there. If I make my beds in the depths, one says, you can say this, if I make my beds in hell, you're there. If my PowerPoint 
shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. Why? Because you are a present God. You can not make my bed in hell. Well, that don't make sense. I thought hell was a separation from God. Listen, there ain't no way that I can be totally separated from him. Wherever he wants to be, there he is, and I'm in love. We call out to him and he hears us. And I'm telling you, you know, you may think that you can just run and you can do your own thing. And you say, oh, I don't want to follow you, Lord. I don't want to do what you But nobody can hide from God. The prophet Amos uh, records God as saying that no one can hide from him. Amos uh, chapter 9, verses 2 and 3, it says, Though they dig into hell, thence shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring uh, them down. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence I will command the serpent, and he shall bite them. He's saying, there's nowhere they're going to go, but they're going to be able to escape. There are times we would like to believe that, that God doesn't see what we, do, what we do. And at the end of time, we're going to stand before God and give an account for everything that we have done. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 13, verse 13 says this. He says, no one can hide from God. His eyes see everything we do. We must give an answer to God for what we've done. So if God is present, and he's all the time around me, then what I do is important. What I choose for this day is important. How I choose to live is, is important. If there's things in my life that don't match up to the righteousness of God, I need to check those things away. Why? Because I'm present with a God, number one, that loves me, who wants good for me, but also a God that I deserve, uh, or that deserves me to live a life that would be pleasing to him. Yeah, I understand we have the grace of God. But you know what? If you want to inherit the kingdom of God, you need to start acting like you belong in that kingdom. Amen. Amen. Righteousness is a good thing. I mean, you're not going to get clean enough to, to get there on your own. You're going to need Jesus. Amen. But you know Amen. what? I ought to look like the kingdom that I belong to. I ought to act like my father. You know what? In my father's house here, there's a certain standard that we live up to. And when I don't act that way, he lets me know. And you know what? In the, in the kingdom that I live in with God and with Jesus and the other saints that have gone before me, there's a way that we ought to act. And there's things that we ought to do and things that we ought not do. Amen. And I look like I belong to him when I act like I belong to him. You know what? The comfort I get knowing that even if I made my bed in hell, God would be there is the same fear that strikes my heart when I think about the things that I've done, those selfish things that at times I act as if God didn't see. You know, there's a great comfort for me. There's a great comfort for me in knowing that God is always there, but there's also a great fear there knowing that God is always there. When I try to... Uh, when I try to say the right things, but say the wrong things. When I try to do the right things, but do the wrong thing. When we live with the knowledge that God is always watching, it allows us to have the power to overcome the temptations that might normally trip us up. There's something about knowing that God's in the room that will make you act differently. Don't you remember when you were a kid, and uh, I grew up in church, and so uh, I, I was sitting on the uh, you know front rows, maybe by myself, or maybe I was sitting in the back. And you know, you, you would... You might act up and be a little silly, right? You might know, get, to, get to mess around, get to poking your friend. But you know what? If your mom or your dad was watching, if your mom or dad was watching, then you were going to act right. Why? Because they were present. And if you didn't, I know how that story goes too. I, I've actually gotten to church five minutes late and seen somebody's parents carrying them out of the church already. I'm like, dude, you didn't even make it five minutes. <laughs> You're already in a whip in the parking lot. This is not good for you. Uh, but you know what? You would act right because you knew he was present. And see, when I understand it, when I live a life that's conscious that God is present in my life at all times, you know what I do? I can curb my bad behavior because I don't want to disappoint him. And I definitely don't want to get in trouble by him. Amen. A lot of times we live like he's not there and the whole time he's there. Yeah. Presence is powerful. But you know what presence does? It creates an environment of protection. That's what it does. Think about this. If you're able to be present at every moment of your child's life, I mean the kind of presence where they've never left your side, your children would walk in complete safety. And that's the kind of life I'm doing. There's nothing that's going to take me out. Take me from this world like over there. You know, you, you, you hurt me, you put your thumb on me, it made me uncomfortable. It may, it, may be, it may seem like it's the worst thing ever, but you know what? The only thing the devil can take from me is my life. But then I get to go be with Jesus. And you know, once I get there, I don't have to worry about him anymore. So he may touch me for a minute, but God...
decides to live another day, and he goes about his business. Why? Because in, when there's a presence, it's powerful, and it's protecting me from what's coming against me. And if my God is for me, then what can come against me? Amen? Come on. Amen. 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 So he's there. He said, in my distress, I called 
threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountain, I sank down. To the roots of the mountain. That's a good ride. <laughs> That's low. To the roots of the mountain, I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought me to life from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols and turn away from God's love for them, but I, with shouts of great praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah on the dry land. When did his situation change? He remembered the Lord. You know what that tells me? It's that God never left him. He just waited for him to respond. He's down at the bottom of fish. He's at the root of the mountain. He's the lowest of the low. He sank down to the depths. You would think that it was hopeless. I mean, can you imagine that you realize I'm in the belly of a fish? And there has to be that thought of, this is not going to work out well. This is not going to be okay. I cannot get any lower than I've gotten. And he said, so then, at that moment, when it was as bad as it could get, I remembered the Lord. And the Lord immediately responded. You don't immediately respond if you're far away. He said, I remembered the Lord. Then the Lord responded, see, the devil would love for you to believe that no one cares, that no one is around, that you're all alone, and all hope is gone. But when we look at this passage about Jonah, although he has ran away from the call of God, although he's rebellious, although he's caused the storm to come upon the, uh, an innocent group of sailors, and he's had to be thrown overboard, and although now he's in the belly of a well, when he remembers the Lord, the Lord responds. And I'd ask some of you this morning, when will you remember the Lord? Because he's waiting to respond. Let me show you here. Uh, look here at Romans 8. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why? Because he's ever present. And with him comes his love. So even in Jonah's failures, God is still on the scene. That's hope for some of us who mess up. It's okay. He hadn't left us. The key was that Jonah took time to remember the Lord. See, you're not alone. You just need to recognize who's in the room. The Lord's already there. As soon as Jonah calls him, he answers. In the middle of Jonah's mess, God was already present and had his ear turned to Jonah. And when Jonah called on the Lord, the Lord moved on Jonah. The, the devil wants the, you to believe that you're alone, but also learn that God is present in your pain. Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. Why? Presence equals protection. Presence equals protection. He's protecting you and guiding you. God is surrounding your circumstances and walking you through them. He's walking you through time. Why? Because he can walk through time because he lives outside of it. Jesus reminds us. You know, it's funny that in Revelation uh, chapter 22, it's the end of the Bible. And it's the end of everything. And then this is what Jesus reminds us. Look, he says, I'm the Alpha and the, and the Omega. I am the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So every difficulty you've ever had, every blessing you ever had, he was God of. Because he was the God of the beginning. He was God of the beginning. So... He is the God of your past, present, and future. He is the God of your past trial, your present trial, and your future trial. He is the God of your past blessing, your present blessing, and your future blessing. Because if He is God of the beginning and He's God of the end, then let me just tell you, He's God of everything in between. Amen. He's just giving you points of reference. I was God at the beginning and I'm God at the end. I'm God all the time you're going through it. And if you've ever been through something, if you've ever been, oh, especially something like a prolonged illness, he is the God of the beginning, and he's God of the end. And all those times in the middle, you're there. I remember <laughs> April's grandmother, she had cancer 
bad about it for about two or three years. It was just a terrible experience. And you know what? It was difficult when it began. It was difficult when it was at the end. And it was difficult in the beginning. But God never left our side. Even in her last days, she could see things that we couldn't see. She could see heaven. She could see things. She could see Jesus. She could see those things. She would let us know. And you know what? It was God bringing comfort in the middle of a bad situation. Like I said, the devil may touch you. He may kill your body, but he won't kill your spirit. And I don't know what thrill of, of, of victory he gets out of taking our mortal life when it's just going to carry us to our eternal one. See, there's no fear in walking, in de walking through death when you're the Christian. I don't like the idea of it. Because I don't know what it's like. And you can't go and experience it and come back. So I don't know what that's like either. So all I know is that at one day it's going to end. But I know where the next one is. And I know when I get to the next one, I won't worry about this one. Amen. In, the, in uh, Revelation 21, it talks about how at the end of time, that God himself, when he creates a new heaven and a new earth, he's going to come down. And it says that the old order of things is going to pass away. And he's going to wipe away all their tears because there's not going to be a need for them anymore. And if that's what's waiting for me, then what's waiting for me is better than what I'm living in now. Amen. I would love to be at a place where I didn't have any more questions. And I'm heading there. He's an all-present God. God is present everywhere at once. He's in heaven and he's on earth. In Jericho, Rahab is there and she's a prostitute, you know, and, and she, she harbors the spies. As Israel sends them in. She protects them. But you know what? She doesn't know the God of Israel. She doesn't. But this is what she said. When we heard it, our hearts melted. And no courage remained in any man any longer because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth below. How can he be in two places at once? Because he buried them both of He consumed them all. God said, heaven is my throne. Earth is my footstool. He's large enough and present enough to occupy those things. What are you currently involved in? What are you currently participating in? What are you doing or saying that you could physically that if you could physically see that God is in the room, that you would be ashamed of? What hardships are you currently experiencing in life that you need to have a realization, like I did last Sunday, that God is invading? Don't get beat down. Get built up. You need to realize that you're not alone, and that's not a bad thing. But instead, it's a place of comfort as long as you submit to it. The only time that it's bad to be in the house of your father is when you're in rebellion. That's real bad. I have PTSD from when I was 15. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 was not, I, was not, I was not very good as a 15-year-old with, with obeying orders. But you know what? There was a great authority there that kept me alive. Um, and so what I would say is I would say, why not just submit to the authority and the love of God and just say, God, I'm here. I know you're present, and I want to do what you want me to do. Randy, would you come this morning? Let me tell you, we serve a God that is present. And if you're in a battle right now, he is already standing in your victory. So what's that tell me? The victory is yours. If you're sick right now, you're dealing with difficulty. He is already standing in your healing. And it's his gift. If you're depressed right now, let me tell you, he can, he's already standing in your happiness. If you're unfulfilled right now, he's already standing in your fulfillment. You just got to submit to the authority that's in the room. And he's got something.
pray. God, we love you. We thank you that you're present, God. Presence is powerful. It is protection for us, God. And we, we hold on to you. And we hold on to you in the midst of our storm, in the midst of our trial, in the midst of our blessing, in the midst of our prosperity. We hold on to you. And we believe you for great, powerful, awesome, mighty things, God. Be with those who couldn't be here today, God. Touch them. Work in their lives, Lord, I pray in your name. Thank you.